uh, sermon this morning is, who is this? Who is this? We're going to be looking at Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. If you have a copy of God's Word and want to turn there, that's fine. We're going to have it up on the wall as well. But as I said earlier, this is Palm Sunday. It is an opportunity for us to be reminded of the week of the Passion, the week that Jesus came into Jerusalem and at the close of the week was crucified for our sins. If you will stand with me in honor of God's word as I read aloud. Now when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village opposite you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, a fold of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and they brought the donkey and the colt, and laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road, Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before those who followed cried out saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. You may be seated. Who is this? I'm taking it from our passage here towards the end. And they are asking, what's all this about? What's all this noise and commotion? What's all this uh, laughter and uh, rejoicing? What's it all about? You know, when a week starts, sometimes there's a whole lot of happy, happy faces and enjoyable things. But also there are some times when a week is rather full, if that makes sense. The week is rather full. There's laughter, then there's a bit of stress and uncertainty, and the week at times could easily close with despair and loss. What had been so promising at the beginning of the week kind of gets lost in the midst of what's happening, issues that, uh, that come up. And you might not sit there and feel this way about it, but sometimes the end of the week is a, kind of a total collapse of all the joy all the hopes, all the dreams that you have at the first of the week. And you could kind of sit there and shake your head. We can't imagine how things end so badly when we had such high dreams. Now you might sit there and say, those don't happen. Sure they do. Did the Bulldogs go play basketball? Were there a lot of hopes? Did everybody think they were going to win? Did they win? Boo. And you might sit there and say, well, I'm not into basketball, but there are some folks who eat and breathe it, yes? And you kind of, it could be that way with some other thing. But sometimes the week begins very well. At the start of the week of the Passion, Jesus enters Jerusalem. And we see it here. The multitudes are so appreciative. They are so um, overjoyed. And what's on their lips? Hosanna. Hosanna. So, <laughs> Hosanna means what? Save, now we pray. They were under Roman domination. They uh, were hoping to be free. And their promised Messiah had come into town. And so it, it made really very good sense. In Psalm 118, we can look a little bit further. It gives us an, an understanding. These feelings had been around for a long time. In Psalm 118, it says, The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. And we kind of know that that's Jesus Christ. This was the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Say, now I pray, O Lord. Hosanna, O Lord, I pray. Send now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. 
This is a prophetic writing from hundreds of years earlier and Jesus comes exactly the same way into Jerusalem. The possibilities are great. And they say, send, save now we pray. O oh Lord, Hosanna. We sang that first song and somebody might have said, well, I don't ever remember that song. Well, that's one of the songs that identifies Palm Sunday. For the people, this long-awaited refrain, we're calling forth from the people in agreement. We agree with that. We believe that. Except for our, a, a small group of people. That's in Luke. We'll look at uh, the next one in Luke if we can. Some of the people that were in the crowd were called Pharisees and they were... Um, Sometimes Pharisees are those folks who wear their halos too tight and give everybody else a headache. <laughs> they're, they're spiritual folks, but you know, you've got to do it this way because it can't be done any other way. Well, some of the Pharisees called out to Jesus from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. That's what kind of beginning of the week it was going to be. You couldn't keep the people quiet, and if they were kept quiet, the stones were going to start talking. Which would have been kind of scary, I tell you. But, uh, you know, that's, there's a negative voice that's being offered there. But do you know that within every positive situation, there's going to be a... You know what I'm talking about. A, 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 a naysayer. Somebody, well, it's not as good as such and such was. It could always be better. Folks, it could always be better, but it could always be worse. Worser. <laughs> really worse hurt. So they weren't necessarily in agreement though the, everybody else was there. So the people are all saying save up now. Did they really mean it? Scripture that we read seemed to suggest they really meant it. When you talk to people do they really mean it? How you doing? Fine. What does that mean? Did you have a good week? I had a great week. Did they? Maybe they did. Maybe they just didn't want to talk to you. Now you sit there and say, is that the nature of people? Yeah, we kind of cut off short. Kind of cut off short. Because we really don't want to expose ourselves. Well, it says that the people were all saying, save us now. But did they really mean it? The week of the passion. The words of the people, I think, were a bit shallow. Because at the end of the week, what were they yelling? They weren't yelling crucify. Oh, I don't know whether I can do this with this, with this mic. Crucify him! You mean the same people that were saying this on the one hand could easily have been saying that on the other hand? Give them a few days, a little pressure, a little stress, a little disappointment. Guess what? You don't have just the negative people that were telling the teacher to rebuke his disciples. You're having a whole crowd of people who were saying crucify him. So did they really mean, save us now? Well, we shall see. Well, <clears throat> during the week, Jesus, the week of the Passion, Jesus confronted several groups. And, and he did it head on. He didn't apologize. He did not apologize for being the Son of God. He cleansed the temple. He cleansed the temple. The whole temple, he cleansed a part of the temple that was the, the court of the Gentiles for those who were possible uh, uh, interested in becoming Jews and in worshiping God. They cluttered that with, with uh, sellers of animals and money changers and he cleaned all that out. And there were those, probably some of these Pharisees as well, who, who uh, questioned his authority to do this. By what authority are you doing this? Who said you could do this anyway? He said, this is my father's house and it won't look like this and that's all there is to it. Now that's a paraphrase, of course. But that's what he said. They were questioning his authority very directly, his authority to lead out. He then begins to talk with those who were called the Sadducees. There were two groups basically in leadership in the country. One were the Pharisees who were scholars and perfectionists. They were the folks who were a little OCD about how you did this and when you did that and if you didn't do it the way they thought, you were wrong. Then you had the Sadducees who were um, the political group and they, they went with the flow. If the flow said crucify him, oh, they're in favor. 
if, uh, if they just wanted things to stay status quo. But he began to talk with the, the Sadducees about an interesting subject, about the resurrection, the resurrection from the dead. They didn't believe that when someone died, there was life after death. They, they thought it was just here and that's it. And life after death sometimes is a scary issue for folks. Yeah, what happens? Well, I don't believe there's anything. Yeah, I've talked with folks about 10 minutes before they go away. They know there's a difference. But by that point in time, uh, it's, it's, all wrote, it's all she wrote, basically. Because they're confirmed that they're not good enough. Well, folks, is there anybody good enough to go with Jesus? <laughs> not in here. Not up here either. Not anywhere in this location. So life after death sometimes is scary. Because um, you'll have folks, is that actually possible? Is that actually possible, life after death? I think this is all there is. Some just have trouble believing the resurrection. The main trouble they have is it would require something that they don't have. It's called faith. Faith's a tough issue. I, uh, yesterday we got home, we were tired. Long day. I have a turn on Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Anybody ever seen that? And it was right at that point where he's... He's trying to figure out if there's some place he can stick his foot so he doesn't fall down in this canyon. Folks, we're not going to fall down into a canyon, but we do need to express faith. It's not by works. It is by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, he began to talk with them about the resurrection from the dead, because guess what? <laughs> Before the week was out, he was going to die and come forth alive from the grave. Anyway, by the end of the week, there was intrigue and there was plotting and everything was going around Jerusalem. We didn't like him. Why did he come in our town? There was the great feast of the Jews that had come around on the calendar. It was called the Passover. It was reflective of when Moses, I was going to say Noah, but anyway. When the Moses brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. And so they were going to observe the Passover. And Jesus was with his disciples. And I think this is kind of common knowledge. In the upper room. And they were all there together in one place. And on the night that Jesus was betrayed. He took the bread. And he blessed it. And he took the cup. And he blessed it too. And he said this cup is the new covenant in my blood. But the disciples were blindsided by a little something extra that he said. Luke's Gospel, chapter 22. Likewise, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of my betrayer is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man goes as it has been determined. But woe to the man by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to question among themselves which of them it was who would do this thing. Everything was kind of difficult, even up to that point, stress. But then Jesus says, one of you will betray me. Is it, is it me? Is it I? I wouldn't do that, would I? Jesus knew who it was. But the tensions began to be ratcheted in just a little bit more. And somebody might sit there and say, yes, that was for them. I don't have those kind of tensions. Really? Really? You don't have things that ought to work one way and they don't work that way. They don't even work. I mean, there, there are tensions that you can't, some of them are kind of funny, but some of them aren't. We drove up this week to see our granddaughter, who's a month old. And we drove part way up there and I was going to go into the store to get something up, uh, up, in the, uh, <clears throat> up in Sonora. And I was about to head in the door. And, you know, men, ladies are, have their problems. Men have their problems. My, my pants weren't fitting correctly. The reason my pants weren't fitting correctly is because my wallet was not in them. So this man could not go and buy what he wanted to buy whenever he wanted to buy it. It was terrible. And what was really bad was Beverly got to drive the rest of the way up and at the top it was snowing. For me it would have been fun again. Let's go. 
You have to have chains. Not I. Just slow down and let's go. You know, it's like, now what do I do? I don't know. I turned the keys over to her and she had this smile on her face until she realized I've got to go the hardest road because I've got to go up the mountain. And we got to the top and it was snowing. But there was stress. But it was a good stress in some ways. Things continued a little bit further than we would like. Um, they said that you were supposed to put on chains and we had them in the trunk but we didn't know what they were for really. <laughs> but as it says here, the disciples were blindsided. The week had begun so well. And now as it was drawing to a close, the disciples were bewildered because it was kind of like a puzzle that they were having to fit into and, and it really wasn't easy for them to fit into. And sometimes it's not easy for us to fit into what God has for our life. What's happening? Why is it happening? What does God want to see here? And in this situation, who is Jesus accusing in the first place? Who is Jesus accusing in the first place? So there's tension. But they are, they are oblivious to the threat that's about to come. And sometimes we, <clears throat> we're present, but we're not aware of what's happening around us. We like happy, don't we? Happy, happy, happy. We like happy. But stress or responsibilities drag us down. And so the disciples were taken off guard. But the scripture tells us that they were quite still full of themselves. And they were talking about who's the, who's the greatest. Well, of course I is. You is, huh? The, this disciple was greater than this disciple. And uh, Jesus basically... Uh, wanted to settle that issue rather quickly and so he sets about doing what? Yeah. He takes the towel and the basin in John's Gospel chapter 13. We don't have it. That's okay. You can look up it later. But Jesus takes the towel and the basin and begins to do what the lowliest of servants would have done for all those who came in and he begins to wash the feet of the fishermen and the tax collector, and the zealot, and so on and so forth. So Jesus humbles himself once again before them, and the disciples are embarrassed. They are humbled, but they are also conflicted. And sometimes when you put enough issues into our lives, we become conflicted. What do we do? How do we do it? What's, what's important? What's next? What really matters for us to do? So we at times are conflicted by circumstances. We desire the best, but we get tackled by problems. You know, we didn't mean to get tackled, but we get tackled by a problem that we just can't do much of anything about. We, like the disciples, face stress and upset and loose ends. Loose ends are those kind of things that, yeah, they're out there, but how do we settle it? How do we affect change in it. But let me just remind you that the Lord is in the storm as much as, as he is in the sunny day. There are several s stories within scripture where, the, where Jesus was in the storm and they knew that they would be okay because he was there and he would take care of them. Jesus and his disciples leave the Passover feast to experience together the Garden of Gethsemane. The Garden of Gethsemane means the place of the olive press where there is pressure squeezing out that which is excess and keeping that which is precious. How can things have started out so well? Because very quickly Jesus is taken away. Jesus is taken away and then he's put into a trial and then he is convicted and finally he is crucified. And it happened just kind of like this. So they were aware of their own needs and their own issues but they weren't aware of the threat that was right outside not, not a few hours away. They weren't aware of it but there is a threat. There's a threat in each of our lives. The threat is that we'll try to handle it in our own strength. We're not strong enough. We're not wise enough. I know that we have some wise guys in here. Wise girls in here. Wise acres in here. 
But folks, we're not wise enough to speak to the needs that we have in our life. That's why Jesus came. And there's not a need, a situation that's too small for his direct attention. Well, as I said, Jesus was accused and convicted and finally crucified. And the disciples, they were destroyed. How could this happen? How could the one that we followed all these three years, how could it have come this way? Where is God now? Sometimes we get into situations and we wonder where God is. Well, folks, he's just as near to us as he was to Jesus when Jesus was on the cross. He's right in the midst of the circumstances that we face. Even if they're long-standing circumstances. They don't have to be just popped up during that week. They may be long-standing and they've just gotten harder and hotter to deal with. Maybe things have come to a head in your life. I've talked with a few even today that what they wished was isn't. But God's right here. God hadn't gone anywhere. God's love is still present. And God is in control. We just need to let him step in. He's not going to knock you down. He's a gracious God. And if you say go away, guess what? He go away. But if you say come on in. If you say save now we pray. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. That's what I need today. Let's pray. Maybe this morning you've been trying to solve your issues without God's direction. Is Hosanna on your lips? Save now we pray. Anyone here that maybe Jesus has called them to follow him? I would tell you that Jesus called no one privately to follow him. He always called publicly. And Jesus didn't die privately. He died publicly. And he shared that if we would not confess him publicly, he would not confess us before the Father. And yes, maybe everything in this week has gone south. Um... Circumstances haven't been kind. But I go back to the scripture that says, who is this? Yes, it is Jesus of Nazareth from Galilee. But Jesus is also the Prince of Peace. He is the bringer of God's peace into our hearts and our lives. Maybe upon our lips might need to be today. Not save us, we pray, but save me. How you come to Jesus, we come just as we are. No pretenses. Father, I pray that as ones may be thinking even now about stepping out, maybe coming to you, that they would realize that you first came to us. That you demonstrated your love to us before we even knew it was needed. But Father, maybe there's someone here today Maybe they don't need to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, but maybe they need prayer. Maybe they need to let go of something that's been holding them back. Whatever it may be, Lord, we just pray with urgency that truly your hand of mercy might reach down upon a heart and a life today. Just as these two you have touched, Lord, there may be another here who needs to know that even in the midst of the greatest of joys there will be stress and even in the greatest of despair and, and difficulty you are right there you are in the storm as you are in the, in the sunny day you can accomplish things if we'll but let you come in and take control of our lives and so Lord I pray that we might open our hearts and our lives to you and that today you might be allowed to make the difference that only you can make for as I said earlier we're not strong enough. We're not wise enough. We don't have the insight that we need. Oh Lord, be our insight. Be our Savior today, I pray, as we come before you and ask your blessing. 
direct in that heart and that life today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll be here at the front.